Brilliant. Um, so I will now introduce um, Lucas with the question, can we validate every change on OpenStreetMap? So. Ciao a tutti. I'm Lucas Martinelli from Mapbox. And yeah, we're going to talk whether we can validate every edit in OSM. And let me try to switch here. So Mapbox exposes OpenStreetMap to hundreds of millions of users. And because of that, we get a lot of eyes on the map. There are lots of areas where we very rarely look at in OpenStreetMap. And our users see everything. So nearly every edit you've ever made years back, they see it. And so that makes us kind of a good um, nervous system for OpenStreetMap because we get signal early if something is wrong. It also means that we can't risk to expose like bad quality or vandalism on the map because whatever you edit, one user in our maps is going to see it. And last year, one challenge we've seen coming up over and over again is vandalism or how we like to call it is harmful data because not every vandalism is like with malicious intent. It can be a mistake. And that's not an uncommon problem. In fact, as online communities grow, the amount of malicious actors usually grows as well. And one of our friends, Wikimedia, um, actually tackled that problem years ago in 2011. It was believed that, oh, sorry, is that better? It was believed that over 7% were vandalism of Wikipedia edits back in 2011, and we're not ne nearly there in OpenStreetMap. So we're really healthy right now, but we need to tackle this now to get ahead of the problem. At a Mapbox, we kind of have zero tolerance for vandalism because we don't want to expose that to a user, and this tells the story of how we tackle that and try to get that back into OpenStreetMap. So what is vandalism? And we really need to distinguish between poor quality mapping or incorrect or ground truth versus harmful. And this is a, an example where you see very blurry satellite imagery, so it's hard to judge whether is this likely ground truth, could this be? And to Mapbox mapping standards, that's probably not mapped accurate enough. So if I would have time personally, I would go remap it, but this is not bad data. It's inconsistent in itself with the map. It doesn't harm anyone, it doesn't offend anyone. So for us, this is not harmful data. This is, this is OK. I would like to improve it, but it's fine. Um, and then you have this. This will throw a user completely off. This is a, a highway. And if a user sees that, it kind of lends an aura of unreliability. They lose trust in the map. Oh, that, that's not consistent. So users stop trusting the map, which is one of the problems we really want to avoid. And Another example is someone accidentally removes London from the map. That's in the same kind of category, and it's very easy to do. So we have to protect our users from that. And I'm just going to walk you through some fun cases, because it's the most fun part of this, uh, of things we see. And on the left, you have someone who either traced the shape really well or an SVG import. Um, I think that's, that's a, a wooden area. There you also have a big water body over Paris in shape of a bird. I think it's cute, but want to prevent that. And then you have lots of people's lives in there that's not necessarily a map label. So someone here really needs help because their smoke detector won't stop beeping. And so, yeah, maybe we should <laughs> have a system to monitor these cries for help. But in this case, all help we can offer is to change that name and revert that change set. Um, then you have some people try to advertise on the map now, because there's hundreds of millions of users looking at it. Someone here is a really good dentist, and I'm going to consider that next time I go. But I still think the name should be Chaipur. And then you also have big fans of Cristiano Ronaldo, um, where someone renamed a national park. Um, there's also some comedy in there where People renamed the Buckingham Palace to Granny Palace. Yeah. <laughs> um, also some statements. I think that's fair. It's still not accurate. And 
Then we also have this uh, classic editing failure where we call this the case of the mysterious transcontinental blue line that started showing up in our map. It's actually a waterway that spans the Earth. Um, so we want to prevent these kind of cases. Or this, the yellow is a modified road, and this is where someone, you see, the way snapped to the wrong node over and over again. And this can go horribly wrong. And for navigation use cases, or even the map, that will totally throw user off. That's harmful data introduced into the system. Or someone removed the highway tag. Not bad, but it also means a deletion in kind of roads. And so they caused the mass deletion accidentally. Or I'll, this is one of my favorite ones. You see an entire person's life in those edits. Um, someone plays too loud piano. That's fair. It's a neighbor's neighbor's house. Um, we have a case for open dog and open cat map here. Um, I've also seen users who map all of their neighbors' names or college students mapping their dorms, um, which is a bit critical because you don't want to expose people's names in the map. Um, what is that? <laughs> that is a kindergarten. And that's the most controversial I go here in those slides. There's also lots of profanity edits that I won't show here. So to give you, we've gone through a bunch of examples, and I want to give you the numbers to this. The most common one, and this is per million changes, is incorrect labels. These are the ones such as Mrs. Minnie's house or my neighbor's loud piano that are not map labels, more like statements. We'll have, the next common one is editing failures, mostly direct notes. It's fairly frequent. We also have plain spam, fantasy mapping on Null Island, people just creating random water bodies all over the a place. Uh, and then we have harmful deletions, which is the case of deleting London or vast area of roads. And I'm not even talking about reverts here, just someone deletes something really important or an important highway. And there are much rarer cases, but those are the most tragic ones, which are obscene labels or profane labels that we really don't want to expose to anyone because kids use maps, millions of kids use them, and um, it really throws users off. And it's a huge problem for corporations because it affects the reputation of both the community and someone like Mapbox. And then you also have graffitis. Those are the most fun, but um, I think someone went really all the way out here of tracing this. Um, this, by the way, means something like the last Chinese warning, which means it's a warning where no action will ever happen as follow-up. Um, so we have this huge amount of daily changes. And as a, if you make a map product, you want to keep your product as up-to-date with OpenStreetMap as possible because you want to prevent data drift. And that's challenging if you have vandalism because you want to, at the same time, protect from that. And you get around 2 million features touched daily that could be modified, deleted, added. And if you see... The too long to read summary of this is it's all buildings and roads in terms of volumes, what happens globally. It's really all buildings and roads, some rare land use land cover. There are around 10,000 label edits, so name edits, um, and I'm excluding house numbers here. We have around 30,000 change sets every day. It's under 1% what is vandalism, which is really good. And 2% would not meet the minimum mapping requirements of, of Mapbox. So we would like to remap those, but we, we have no good way of doing that right now. Um, and then we have 20,000 people joining every month and making edit, which is wonderful. Um, we still have to help them somehow because what we found is 30% of new users make some mistake or they tag a building wrong within their first 10 edits. So those 20,000 people, that's a lot of edits we kind of we kind of can ask for a review now in ID, which is great, that we have to help out. And there you see like how a month looks like in edits. can be anything between 3 million to 1 million edits. Um, so we've t tried to address this problem at Mapbox for the past years, and we've iterated on this three or four times. And what we've found is they have this huge range of potential vandalism that can happen. And you start out by writing some algorithms because that will solve everything. You start detecting profanity. You start detecting very sharp, impossible angles. 
You go to monitor new users. You start blacklisting users. But all of that only protects a very small range of the potential vandalism that can happen. And the only way we found to really understand what's going on is to sample everything. Someone has to look at everything. And we humans are really good at doing that. And a word about um, user reputation we found while new users make more mistakes and more prone to vandalism, doesn't mean someone experienced doesn't do vandalism. There are people who have 2,000 edits and decide to rename a town to something profane. So that's not a, you, we removed user reputation for that case um, and look at every edit. And the statement here is one approach doesn't address all cases of vandalism. Our catch-all is human review and then we have lots and lots of machine algorithms that try to help out as well. And I'm going to explain our approach a bit here. And the first three steps are kind of of bringing OSM into a good shape to do this work, to review everything. One is to break up OSM, the monolayer, into data layers, because there's a lot of niche stuff. Um, so you break it up by building, roads, water. And then we, we go away from the change set model. We actually partition it day by day. So you have a day's worth of update by layer, and that rolls up a lot of activity. There may be 100 change sets mapping each one individual building. That all gets rolled up in a batch of changes per day. We found this a really good unit of change. And then we want to go more granular. So we kind of redefine a known change set, which we call kind of deltas. Or, and what we do is we cluster those daily changes spatially. And so you get a more uniform distribution if someone maps 3,000 buildings in one change set, that's too much for one person to look at. Um, and that is specific per, per layer. And I have some examples here of a big change set that modifies roads and buildings and so on. And those get kind of broken up into smaller, more reviewable um, change sets. Um, so we end up from those 30,000 change sets in around 80,000 of those deltas that we want to review every day. And so we look at the new state of the map compared to yesterday on a daily basis and say, what's good about the new state of the map compared to yesterday? And then you go on day by day. And so the next step is to review those daily changes that you found out. And review means not only human review, but running like edit distance algorithms and doing all of that. And I'll talk a little bit more later. Um, it's also important then when we review and something is bad and we fix it, we still want to apply the update. So we kind of freeze that part of isolated diff. And those, are, those persist over multiple days. So let the next day, if someone fixes it, we get a chance to look at that modified change set again and say, oh, yesterday's state was bad. Today's state of that change set is good, though. So thumbs up. And then we apply those daily validated batches of updates on our map products. So for maps, this means re-rendering all the tiles, but only the updates that are good. And you see at no way ever here happens an edit. This is all upstream. Every fix happens upstream. So it's just delaying that a little bit and then applying them later on as they're fixed. And once you've collected this huge amount of things you've tagged and flagged, you try to share them. And I'm going to talk more about how we share them. And you fix them. And that continues day by day. Um, you have a batch of those diffs. You go fix them. The next day, they come in as um, fixed diffs, or someone in the community fixes them immediately. So you get a chance to look at it again. Um, and I want to talk some methods we use for machine review that are a little bit less known. I think linters are quite commonly known for like sharp angles or topology linting. Another one is profanity checking, which is having sim simple profanity checking that try a lot, a lot of languages to see whether it matches to something in a dictionary. Um, there's a lot of profanity that can happen in OpenStreetMap that I'm not showing on the slides. And this is the first line of defense. And another one is using some natural language processing techniques. Map labels have very unique uh, natural language properties. They usually don't have possessives. They're not sentences. Um, so you can really kind of build classifiers that assess how likely is this to be a cartographic label or a, 
a place name or a street name versus just text, because someone could also spam entire OpenStreetMap with text. Um, on the right, you see a lot of shapes of buildings that have been marked or classified as buildings. And you can build a classifier that says, how likely is this shape to be a building versus a water body? And so you would detect graffitis like that as well, to some degree, or someone accidentally mapping a water body as building. You also want to monitor drastic changes to very stable features. Again, the London example. Those are very, I wish we would have stable identifiers, features that sh shouldn't change too much. So you want to monitor if huge edit distances happen. And now to the human review, we kind of review changes in four dimensions, which cover nearly all of the attack surface that's possible. One is geometric shapes. And on the right, you see kind of a Tinder-like interface where you swipe on the good edits versus the, the ones you like less. And in this case, we look at building shapes. And we found an airplane here mapped in the water which is very common. People love mapping airplanes on satellite imagery. Um, and we go through with a high speed and kind of flag what's really an outlier. We do that for labels. We look at every label. We look at hierarchies such as motorway. And you see, then we classify those changes. And here you see it for water bodies. We, in this GIF, we go through the water bodies. And at the end, you'll see, we'll, see so, we'll find some triangular water bodies that are bad. So those are all look consistent. That looks not like something that should be in the map. And then we QA all those reviews. So our review team really gets sampled. We know if you have 100 graffitis, they will find 99% of them together with the machine review. And we kind of then take this big batch that was flagged and single out the most harmful features. So our review team reviews 80,000 changes every day. We flag around 2,000 changes that something is kind of low quality, and that ends up in 200 really harmful defects that our team goes and fixes. The good news is 50% of those issues are already fixed once we come and try to fix them on OSM. So the OSM community keeps up with some, but then there are also incidents where something remains for six months in the map. Here you see a map of our daily catch here um, with things we've caught. And we want to share those detections. And right now, we want to do that on OSM Cha and make that a kind of one-stop shop for OSM validation. And we make all our harmful detections public. If you go in OSM Cha and search for the flag for review by Mapbox filter, you should find the change sets that we mark as, as bad and want to fix. And then we regularly go through and fix those. We still try to iterate better on how we share that. And I hit me up later on of how how you want to collaborate that multiple people and companies can share their detections. And here you see a complete example where the GIF started a bit ahead, where I see something in OSM Cha, I, I go, then on go to fix it in ID in under a minute. So it took probably a second to flag this as bad. And then here you see, I found something that's tagged. I verified as bad. It's unintentional. This is a direct node. It's unresolved yet. I jump over to OpenStreetMap. I see the element. I edit it. I unsnap it from the other node. I fix it and save it all in under a minute. And we've reverted that really harmful change. It's safe. So what are the takeaways here? The awesome community is remarkably healthy right now. Only a very low percentage of edits is harmful, which is amazing. I think we have cultivated a really good community. We got to watch out, though. And one thing to note is OSM is eventually consistent. When you take a snapshot, you will catch vandalism. And what we do at Mapbox is we kind of lag behind to always provide you a consistent, validated view of OpenStreetMap. And we really need to work together to protect the future of OpenStreetMap that vandalism doesn't become a bigger problem. And we need better shared monitoring efforts for that, share our detections, work together to fix them. And that's it. I have a question.
So we have uh, five minutes for questions. Uh, okay. Thank you. Hi, Hello, Lucas. Hello, Simon. Um, I, ha I have two questions, and one is more general. Um, have you seen an actual relative increase in vandalism, or is it simply the number of contributions inc increasing, our, our data size increasing? That means that in absolute terms we yeah. have more vandalism. Oh, that's a great question, and I had to skip over that. I think that changed last year. As our user demographics change more, Pokemon Go is a really big one. I think that brought a whole new set of mappers to OpenStreetMap. Um, you could say the same for Snapchat. And so I think the user's demographics are changing. So I would say since last year, that's true. OK, and my other point is fairly specific. Well, and accidentally, um, last week, I ran into some vandalism in Switzerland. Um, very low key, mm -hmm. user changing his username every so five, six edits. Right. And um, what he did, or she did, who knows, um, was actually game place names in, in a way that I don't believe that you would detect. And I actually went back to OSM Hart and, and, and checked whether it, these edits were flagged by, by Mapbox, because I assumed that was what this meant. And um, it, none of those edits were flagged. And essentially, they, they created place names, stuff that looked like place names that were obscene and racist in some cases. And so I, I still think, you know, there's just relying on machine learning to, to detect this stuff is going to be very difficult. You actually have to be a native speaker of the language to realize, oh, this is actually not a good place name. So uh, two points. We're still trying to work out how to best share our detections. So only the detections of the last month we really kind of were able to get into. So it might very well be that we did catch that because we have good profanity detection for German. We even have a Swiss dictionary for profanity. Um, for native speakers, we, we try to translate it or try to get people who speak the language of that label. So I think we might have caught that. It's not an OSM cha. But there are some really, really intricate ways to do vandalism if you really, really want to hurt OpenStreetMap. And we can only find out over time how those attacks look like and I guess improve map gardening overall to catch these incidents where the local community needs to find it. So I would say the answer to that is to improve map gardening and people looking out and maintaining their, their area. They know best. Does Mapbox look for Pokemon Go parks? Um, oh, maps and, oh, parks. Yeah, because they increase spawn, point, spawn points. Yes, that's actually one of the first cases we started to look at. It's a very big correlation between parks in urban areas that overlap and are new users. We're fairly confident we catch those. Hi. Um, don't know. <laughs> um, so I, th I think it's great that Mapbox uh, one part of OpenStreetMap helping it out to, to kind of fix these things, um, especially your tools to identify bad changes. And it seems they're often mistakes. So I wondered, are you, if you're able to identify place like geographic places where there are lots of mistakes, are you connecting with the local communities to kind of help them, you know, actually do some education and train local mappers so we don't get the mistakes in the first place? I think you see a fairly uniform distribution across the world where mistakes are happening. You also see a load of remote mapping, especially for vandalism. I think those are really new users often in the mistakes that are hard to kind of integrate in a community and teach like that. So it's all about onboarding, I think, in this case. And it's still that a new user can edit anything. They can go and change London, which is the powerful thing about OpenStreetMap, but also the dangerous as we're at millions of users now. So I don't have a clear answer for that, except make the onboarding flow better for new users. 
I think it's Heather. Um, thanks, Lucas, for your uh, for your chat. I just to build on what Gregory said. So we have all these tools, we have all these techniques for how to make the data better, but we haven't thought about how to help the community improve, right? So when we say local onboarding and mapathons and better training and better validation at mapathons, how do we connect? And so my, my challenge really is not just for Mapbox, for, but for everybody, how do we better use our brains in terms of technical development to connect the question about improvement back to the user? So for example, I would sign up for something that said, hey, here's some tips and tricks. I would sign up for a welcome onboarding. I would sign up for someone, like I know we get comments on our edits, but it'd be nice to have like a mentor. That'd be awesome, thanks. So a map, map make, matchmaking. I think the review functionality in ID plus the notes that are coming now are perfect examples of that, yeah. Thank you for the lecture, Lucas. Um, was it possible for you to find out if there are regions with more uh, vandalism and regions with less uh, vandalism? There's always political contended areas. Um, I only have a hunch. It seems where there's more mappers going on, that's happening more frequent. So in Europe, it's actually fairly common to see it. But it's fairly uniform. I wouldn't make a statement about regions being more prone to vandalism than others. High visibility areas, but that's not always true. People love to fantasy map in the middle of nowhere. A last question. You told us that user reputation is, is not a good, uh, is not a perfect indicator because there are reputed users who are to provide harmful data. But aren't those cases outliers? I mean. I was wondering about this story. Thank you. Those are outliers, but I still would not solely rely on a reputation system. Like if you, let's say we have a reputation system and only someone who has hundreds of edits is allowed, can edit London or otherwise it has to be reviewed, you will always need a review for really important features. Yeah. Those are out outliers relative to new users in terms of sheer volume. So that was the last question. Sorry for who couldn't ask uh, their own questions. Now you, we have a break of half an hour, and then we uh, start again with the presentation here.